transmitted infections uh, like syphilis, gonorrhea or chlamydia, you don't have a lasting immunity in, for, for these diseases. So it's bouncing back and forth. And uh, you can see, um, it's, since, since these are all modeling assumptions, it's always uh, important to check with reality, or in that case with virtual reality. And um, I found a really nice example. This video is looping as well. Mm. Here, I turn it down a bit. Here you see, um, it's, it's Ironforge. Yes, yeah, Iron, Ironforge, the big city. Uh, or the, the walls of Ironforge, the home of the dwarves. And um, unlike before, they, I mean, they get hit by the disease, but they don't die. They, they're quite tough. So some of them die, but most of them don't die. And um, you see the disease bouncing back and forth. And uh, when you look closely, then this character um, survives the 10 seconds, so it's not in infectious anymore. But then someone passes him. I think it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. Now he get yeah. Now he gets infected. Yeah, he gets infected again. So this is what would happen in a classic SIS model. And uh, I was very glad to find it uh, proven by this nice video. Um, so. Yeah, this, this was the situation you just saw, S, I, S, bouncing back and forth and back and forth. And um, this is now the same results, a bit um, dry or graphically. I use the same uh, parameters, of course, here they are now recovered because you don't have the compartment recovered anymore. Um, we start with 3,000 players, one is infected, two contacts per second, 95 stay infected all the time. So it's the red up here. So 95% of your players in your World of Warcraft world are infected all the time. Now, if the contact rate is a bit lower, uh, you have uh, like one contact every two seconds. Well, 80% of people stay infected all the time. And uh, it's still not very good. And um, if you have one contact every 20 seconds um, and start with 500 infected, then it goes down to zero. So something, there must be something with the contact rate going on. And here's another concept in uh, epidemiology and um, modeling infectious diseases, the concept of R0. Um, I'm using the British um, version, how, how I learned it sometimes. You, you could call it R0 or RO. Uh, I just learned it the way it's called R0. And uh, R0 is just a concept. And um, it says, uh, how many people does one infected infectious person infect if everybody is susceptible? So at the very beginning of an epidemic, um, like everyone in this room here is, um, is susceptible, and we just drop one person uh, who is infected, how many of us could that person infect? And that number is R0. And you. Uh, people try to, to build a concept around this, and one concept is that you um, take, well, you use these, um, you, you write it in, in you, you, you rewrite it in terms of duration of infectiousness, the contact rate, and the transmission probability, and um, it intuitively makes sense because if you uh, stay infected for a longer time, you have more opportunity to infect others. At the same time, if you contact a lot of people, you infect more. However, if you uh, go down in your basement and don't meet anybody, like a classical qu quarantine or isolation uh, measure, you, you, although you, you, uh, it might be a very contagious disease, you don't infect anybody. Um, and then the transmission probability, if there is a disease which doesn't really infect people or you need to meet 100 people in order to get infected, then you will infect fewer, um, you will create fewer secondary infections. And uh, in the SIS case, for example, uh, we have the duration which is 10 seconds. The transmission probability is insane, it's one, it's just, well, stu well not stupid, but it's, um, it never, it never happens in nature. Um, and you, the contact rate is, is left over. In the SIRS case, uh, I just assume that you die after two seconds. So like after two blows, you're, you're dead. So you remain infectious for uh, four seconds. Um, you can do the same calculation with six seconds or two seconds. And um, 
the interesting thing is once you conceptualize the um, inf the, the, the epidemic or the, epi the, the dynamics in the epidemic in this way, you can ask yourself, <coughs> um, or you start with what is R0, how many people uh, uh, does one infectious person infect, um, what are the, the boundary conditions for R0 to become lower than one? Because if uh, infected people infect fewer than one person, then in the end the epidemic dies out. And it's quite simple, you just solve this uh, equation or this unequation. In the case of SIRS, you have four times C times one, must be smaller than one. You do some really difficult maths and you come up with uh, the contact rate has to be uh, lower than a fourth. And I, this, is this, this is the scenario C. Uh, where I had one contact every five seconds, <laughs> that's why I chose this value, actually, and uh, um, the infection dies out. So um, yes, so 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 that's that's how the R naught is also connected with the with the SIR model, and. Um, this concept also helps you to think in terms of interventions, like what can we do in order to control disease. And I mentioned uh, already quarantine, you can just reduce the contact rate. Um, <coughs> if the contact rate is zero, then R0 is zero. So um, you have to pay special attention at um, quarantining the, the uh, inf infected people. The problem with influenza is that you are infectious without uh, getting ill. So you feel all right, but you already spread the virus. Um, with smallpox, it was different. The second you had the, the, the smallpox pustules, you were infectious, but you weren't infectious before that. So you could actually see when somebody was infectious, and then you could quickly add and vaccinate people and vaccinate everybody around them. With uh, influenza, um, it's, it's more difficult. Then you have treatment. You could use Tamiflu, for example, that reduces the duration of infectiousness or that reduces the transmission probability. Some people uh, propose, yes, you should wear face masks, face masks because then the transmission probability is also greatly reduced. Um, social distancing is a term which basically says stay at home uh, or, or just don't meet anybody. Um, and in the context of World of Warcraft, it also means stay on Ogrima's rooftop which uh, the next video is showing. And there can be some interventions which, are, uh, which have a very good intention, however they are counterproductive for the whole um, epidemic. Um, the corrupted blood epidemic could not be controlled by Blizzard. They had to reload the world. They had to really shut down the virtual world, change the parameters, make corrupted blood not infectious anymore, and then just reload the world. <laughs> I mean, obviously we can't do this with the real world. So um, the next video is quite funny. It's again by um, it's again by Fax Monkey, and it's it's looping as well. So here you see people on the rooftop. They are socially distancing themselves. Um, some people down there actually shout, "Yes, we should spread the disease up there to the people on the rooftop." <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm serious. I mean, it's really funny. You should, you, um, you, uh, it's called, what's it called? If you Google Fax Monkey and Corrupted Blood, you, you, you get, the, I think it's a, it's a 30 megabyte download. It's really funny reading all these messages here. And they are just watching and seeing the epidemic raging through Ogrimar. Now, the laser beams in the background are a magical healing spell called Chain Healing. And... Uh, the intention is to help others to 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 stop them from dying and to to uh, I don't know to reload their, their their life points. However, by doing this, they um, they are increasing the the duration of infectiousness, um, and this in the end makes the disease dynamic worse. So what they should do is somehow have um, social isolation and then do the healing. Um, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't help in an, in an epidemic. Um, <laughs> um, of, of course you should help, but you, you, you have to be really careful what you do, uh, because in the worst case you uh, actually make things worse. And for example, in the SARS, SARS epidemic, they <coughs> because it was a, respi <coughs> a respiratory infection, <laughs> 
um, they wanted to uh, ease breathing. And uh, in the hospital, which had a really high infection rate in the end, they started to put, um, how, how are they called, the um, bedampfer, the, the steam, the, the menthol steam to make breathing easier for the patients. And um, that they had a little machine which, which blew um, s steam, hot, hot water steam, to, to make it easier for them to breathe. How, how is it, how's it called? Humidifier, yes, yeah, something, yes, like a humidifier. However, if you have an airborne infection, um, <laughs> no, I mean aerosolization is really the last thing you want to do. Um, so, the very good intention of helping people uh, turned um, this um, epidemic, in the case of SARS, uh, even um, worse, or m made it made it uh, worse o only in this particular uh, hospital. Now, here's the R0 of some diseases. Um, you can look it up in the literature. Measles has a very high R0. Foot and mouth disease um, in the UK, f February 2001, which was also covered by press, they started with 8.4, and then when they found out that it was actually the sheep spreading the disease and the movement of sheep around the country spreading the disease, um, they stopped animal movement and it was reduced. And um, influenza, for example, has an R0 of about three. Uh, yes, public health message, condoms protect against HIV. Um, and corrupted blood, if you take the SIS version, you have a, t a duration of 10 seconds, and if you have five contacts per second um, in the city, you have an R0 of 50. And this is just insane. Now, um, <coughs> oh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> it's the R. <laughs> I'm recovered. I, I, I'm, I'm not drinking from the eye. <laughs> hmm. um, now the question, is World of Warcraft an epidemic simulator? Yes, of course. It's the largest human-based agent system. So uh, you do not program uh, human. You, you, you wait or you have... Um, Human decision, yes, this, this was a nice phrase, human decision and behavioral choices versus computer simulations. Um, people enjoyed uh, infecting others and enjoyed dying. <laughs> I mean, this is what you just saw, that they run around, infect others and watch them die. <laughs> and, um, and, and World of Warcraft especially is very complex and um, there is a lot of fine-tuning uh, possible. There's an immense social interaction and it's geographically distributed so you could even model different uh, cultural preferences like what people would do, I don't know, in Asia or in the um, United States or in Europe or uh, I don't know where. Um, and uh, however, there's a really big flaw in this argument. Um, the human risk behavior um, is not modeled by World of Warcraft. I mean, if you have no permanent death, um, you, you just don't go out and try, what happens if I get infected? What happens if I get the plague? Um, so, the, you, the, the, the human risk behavior is not modeled by this game, and this is why a lot of people say, yes, it's interesting to look at it from the disease dynamics point of view, but do not use it as an epidemic simulator. And um, the players might not reflect the general population. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, the, the greatest problem which I, as uh, a public health person, have is there's no disease surveillance implemented. And this is a, a, it's a really big tra a tragedy, tragedy that um, Blizzard um, didn't have... Um, didn't count who got ill and who didn't get ill. And uh, another moral point would be, is it ethically right to allow your avatar to take part in a medical trial? Uh, oops. And uh, there are some ideas for making better virtual epidemics. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, why should an orc infect an elf? I mean, why should a virus be able to infect orcs and elves and all, all, all online, uh, all, all avatars with the same probability? So you could have a transmission matrix, like human infects human, very good. Orc, orc, very good. Undead, they are so full of disease, they infect everybody. <laughs> 
Um, however, an orc, is, an orc is really tough, so he doesn't get infected by a human. Um, the human is more a wimp, so he gets infected by everybody. And um, th this would just make it more <clears throat> a little bit more complex, but also maybe a little bit more realistic. And um, I think it would be really interesting to reintroduce infectiousness in World of Warcraft. Uh, you could add immunity or also 